Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at MSI's GM11 Clutch Gaming Mouse. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at MSI's Clutch GM11 Gaming Mouse. Now, this is actually a budget mouse, well, relatively so, obviously, when you say the word budget and gaming in the same sentence, it doesn't always make a great deal of sense because, uh, yeah, gaming costs money. But this is actually a pretty cost-effective device. Comes into us in the UK at the moment around about £25, which I actually think is a really good value for money. Even the cheaper ones on Amazon, that sort of thing, gaming mice with RGB and all that kind of stuff, you end up paying considerably more for that even for the unknown brands. Whereas at least with this, you know, it's going to synchronize really nicely with the MSI peripherals. So in the Red Dragon Center, all that kind of stuff, it's going to work absolutely perfectly in there. So you can color match to your heart's content should you wish to. But if you don't have any of our MSI products and you just want to use it as is, you can still use it with the Red Dragon software and coordinate it to whatever look you like. So whether you're using IQ or whatever, you can find a way of pretty much matching in with the rest of your setup. So overall, this is uh, what I would call in the kind of perfect mouse territory at least for me anyway obviously if you disagree let me know in the comment section i'm sure someone will do somewhere but for me this actually works out really well being that i am a lefty and in a house full of other people which are right-handed having a mouse which uh, suits everybody is actually a real pain and we quite often share each other's computers use each other's desktops all that kind of stuff so having a mouse which both lefties and righties can use quite easily actually does fit the bill so this is a ambidextrous mouse so if you are left-handed you can use it in your left hand if you're right-handed you can use it in your right hand there's no weird ledges or any resting points for your hand it's designed to be completely symmetrical so pretty much anyone can use it straight off without having to kind of get used to it it's very very easy very very tactile and actually just fits the palm of your hand so that's enough of an intro let's get into the actual packaging see what we get go through some of the specs and then we'll take it out and take it for a quick spin so starting off with the packaging, this is pretty much what we expect to see these days from MSI. They're very usual packaging, uh, clutch GM1, gaming mouse, MSI logo, and you've got RGB logo, which we always like to see. On the side of the box, got some information uh, about warnings, etc. on the back. Go through some of the more detailed sections of it. So we've got ambidextrous design. We've got a five level DPI switch, which is really handy to see. We've also got the extra comfy large scroll wheel, which again, really good. MSI Dragon logo, which is on the back, which lights up, and you've got a U-shaped RGB section on the bottom. And also you've got some side buttons as well, so you can set those if you're going forward, back, or reload. Whatever the case may be, you can set those up and do exactly what you want. The only real requirements for this, if you want to use the RGB lighting, is that you're using Windows 10, and you've got USB 2 ports, that kind of thing. If you're using it on anything else, Mac, all that kind of stuff, it will plug in and will work as a regular mouse, but you won't be able to take control of the RGB that is only in Windows 10. So looking closer at the specifications, we've got the Pixart PMW sensor, which is the 3325. Polling speed of up to 100 hertz. Five speed DPI switch, so we've got 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and 5000. And also we've got Omron switches, so up to 10 million plus clicks. So should be fine for solitaire. Six buttons included, and also you've got a USB cable, which is a 1.8 meter length cable, and the product dimensions are 118 by 62 by 37 millimeters. The actual weight of the mouse without the cable, which uh, I always wonder why they include that, but I guess it does mean something, is 89 grams. So it's not a lightweight mouse, and it's not a heavyweight mouse. It's in that kind of comfortable in-between zone. So that's enough waffling, let's take it out of the box. Actually, there is another nice part of this packaging. Before we do that, you have got this section here as well, which flips out so you can actually take a look inside. And it does say, try me, but, um, well, you can't because there's a plastic cover. So better take it out of the box. So inside the packaging, what do we get? So we get a MSI logo leaflet, and we get the mouse itself in this actually pretty nice packaging. So first of all, looking at the mouse itself, it's actually finished in a really nice kind of gunmetal gray finish, a kind of satin matte finish. It's not completely glossy, which is really good because that would pick up horrendous amounts of grease and dust and fingerprints. And actually, it feels really nicely constructed. It's quite a strong, I don't know if it's polycarbonate or what kind of plastic it is, but it does feel really sturdy. It doesn't have any obvious real flex to it, so it's pretty well made. It's got nice clicky Omron switches there for your left and right mouse buttons. And also an Omron switch for the sensor scroll wheel, which has got a kind of like a tire track mold on there, which is uh, feels really nice. and. It's not overly notchy, but there certainly is a notch to it. So again, with mice, it's really, really personal preference. Some people prefer it to be sort of super notchy. Some people prefer it so it just spins freely. 
Again, really you need to try it to work out what it's like for yourself. And I suppose that's the beauty of it. If you pick one up from Amazon, from the affiliate links below, then obviously you can take it home, try it, see what it's like, and if it's not for you, just send it down and thing back. So moving down after the scroll wheel, we've got our DPI switch. Now again, in the MSI control center, you can actually tailor these buttons to do pretty much anything you want to. So although I'm saying like this is your left button, that's the right button, that's your scroll wheel, that's your DPI button, that's your forward and back, you can go into the software and completely configure that, which uh, we'll actually take a look at that a little bit later on. Moving down towards the rear there, we've got this MSI logo, which lights up, which we'll see when we plug it in shortly. On the side, we've got the two side buttons, as we mentioned just a second ago, and there is a very small slither of RGB, which goes around the outside edge, which takes us around to the underside, where we've got three pads for gliding around on surfaces, and obviously the optical sensor. The actual shape of the mouse is uh, pretty nice, and for me personally, it fits in hand quite nice. It's actually a relatively smallish mouse, so if you like smaller mice and you like that kind of whole grip situation, then it's going to be absolutely fine. I actually really do like the GM30, I think it is, which I've got on the PC behind me. So chances are this is going to swap out and the GM30 will probably go to my video editing rig. But I'm not too sure. I might actually keep hold of this one. It does feel nice. It's got a nice feel to it. A nice grip on the sides and it does actually fit my hand really, really nicely. So anyway, let's get it plugged in and see what it's actually like. Now I have taken the liberty of already installing the MSI Dragon software on here and pre-configuring it with the mouse attached. So everything works and literally just plug it in and you're up and running. As you would be on most systems, the choice of installing the software is entirely up to you. If we go over to the screen now, you can see this is the uh, the mouse in question. So it's the MSI Clutch GM11 RGB optical gaming mouse, up to 5,000 DPI optical sensor, six programmable buttons, dual zone RGB, symmetrical design, Omron switch with 10 plus million clicks, suitable for solitaire. They forgot that bit. And it's got RGB Mystic Light, which is again, part of the Dragon Center. And as you can see at the moment, currently selling for 24 pounds with free shipping on Amazon Prime, which again, I think is brilliant. And looking closer at the design now, you can see some of the elements fit the sensor, etc. You get the general idea. So if you want to pick one up, uh, head on over to Amazon. You can check it out and go to MSI after you've done that. And you can go to the Clutch GM11 section on their site and you can go through and look at the review specifications. But in support, there is the driver, so you don't really need a driver as such, it just works. But if you want to get into the whole RGB thing, all you need to do is to head over to here, click on Dragon Center, and you can install the Dragon Center software. If you've already got an MSI motherboard or whatever going on already, then possibly you've got that already. So this would be a great partner to go with the rest of that setup. So if we open up the MSI Dragon Center, as you can see here on the desktop, so you can go into the individual devices. So if you've got an MSI device at the top, you can choose your GM11, which is where we are now, and click on mouse. And you can go in and do the various things. So you can change all the button set situations. So if you want to change the DPI level button and change that to something else, you can go through, choose it for a multimedia function, uh, disable it altogether if you want to. Essentially, you can do pretty much what you like with it. Sensor-wise, you can go in and you can change your settings. You can if you want to, like I said before, you can just change the DPI on the top by pressing the button. But if you want to keep it as a specific setting, whenever Windows boots up and you've got the Dragon Center installed, you can choose your DPI level. Now I generally keep mine as level three, which is 1600 DPI, which I've got on the mouse behind me as well, and my desktop mouse. So it just actually feels completely normal. And actually this does slide around really nicely on the surface. The pads on the bottom, it's just rubber pads. There's nothing special, no ceramics or anything, but certainly on this Ikea desk, actually moves around really nicely and yeah, seems very accurate. You can, if you want to as well, you can change the polling rate. So you've got 125 hertz, 250 hertz, 500 hertz, and 1000 hertz. I guess ideally you want to keep it 1000 hertz if you possibly can to have those quicker reactions. But yeah, that's, uh, that is pretty much it. Again, DPI you can change in there if you wish to. Just choose the level and change the level five. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that is very sensitive. Uh, level two. But no, we're going to go for level three. That is what I prefer. So click on apply, and that is going to apply the settings. You can tell when it's applying settings because there's a flashing light on the back. So the MSI logo will flash briefly when it's accepting settings or being programmed. So let's close that down now, and let's go into the main section. So we're going to Mystic Light, and you can see there's about seven or eight different settings you can choose straight off the bat. So in the LED style, you've got off, wave, steady, breathe, radar, horizon, ripple, and reactive. So you can choose any one of those, obviously, if you want to, just turn the RGB off altogether, hit apply, and after a few seconds, it'll go to sleep. The uh, light's flashing there to say that it's programming, but other than that, that's it. So RGB, if you don't like your RGB, just turn it off altogether and just enjoy the mouse for what it is. But hey, you guys know me, I like my RGB, so I'm going to choose wave and hit apply. And that is pretty much it. That's all we need to do. And as you can see, 
RGB comes through really nicely on that little slither around the outside edges, which is actually quite uh, quite subtle in my opinion. It's not kind of glaring or really bright in your eyes. And if you're actually using it on a darker environment, it's not really going to be distracting because there's not really a great deal going on on top. And essentially your palm is going to be covering up the main MSI logo. So if you don't like being distracted by RGB and the kind of peripheral vision, then actually this is going to be a pretty good choice. So going back to the settings for the RGB, again, options there. So you can have steady, breathing, radar, horizon, ripple, reactive. So reactive is essentially every time you press a button, then it will change the color. So if we click on apply now, and now that's gone into reactive mode. So as we click, we get a different color coming up and it just goes through and changes the color every time you click on it. Personally, that isn't really what I like. So let's go back. I do enjoy the wave setup. Actually, just to be different, let's go with uh, steady and we'll just set it to the MSI red. Hit apply and after a few seconds, and straight away we go into one of our typical MSI bugs. Now for some reason, I don't know why, it doesn't want to change color when I'm in steady mode. So let's try in uh, breathe and we'll set it to set it to red. And it's changed. Yeah, sometimes the MSI Dragon Center isn't always the most uh, reliable. And fortunately, they do update it very, very regularly. In fact, actually, when I installed this, this is a newer version that's on my PC behind me. So I quickly updated that one as well. So yeah, these little bugs do get ironed out eventually if there's enough people that complain about them, but some things are actually not too bad anyway. Unfortunately, there isn't actually such a thing as a perfect product on the market as far as I'm concerned, but well, it does come pretty close. And especially at around about £25 for a PixArt sensor mouse, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. The other alternatives on the market, you've got the Asus Tough Gaming Mouse, which sometimes you can pick up for around about £20. That's a pretty decent option. Also, you've got the Corsair, the M55 RGB Pro, which sometimes drops down to around about the £25-£30 mark. And again, very, very similar ambidextrous mouse, very, very similar features as well, but works with, specifically with the IQ software. So if IQ is your thing, that's maybe worth a look. And if you want to take a look at that, actually, click on the link up here and you can check that mouse out as well. You never know, it may be an option for you. But certainly for me personally, I do seem to be getting more and more into the MSI ecosystem. The motherboards at the moment for the AMD stuff are brilliant. They are very, very good boards and yeah, maybe an MSI monitor at some point as well. Who knows? But anyway, I'm rabbiting on way too much. Let me know what you think of this in the comments section below. Is this the sort of thing that you would buy for yourself? Do you like the Pixar 3325 sensor? Does it do enough for you at this kind of budget level in the gaming arena? So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.